You'll never have to crochet into the chain again with this stitch. I'm going to show you the foundation double crochet stitch, which makes the foundation chain and your first double crochet row at the same time. First, you're going to make a slip knot, then chain three. Make sure not to make these too tight. To start the double crochet foundation, we need to yarn over and put our hook into the first chain, picking up the two legs on the V. You should have four loops on your hook here. Then, we're going to yarn over and pull through that chain stitch. You'll have three loops on your hook here. Make sure the loop closest to the head of your hook isn't too tight. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through one loop only. This is where the usual method for the double crochet begins. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over once more and pull through the last two loops on your hook. And that's your first foundation double crochet stitch. Now we need to look at the top of our stitches to see where we put our hook next. If you turn the stitches towards you, you should be able to see a V near the slip knot. This is the chain stitch we have just made. Yarn over and insert your hook here, picking up both of those loops of the V. Again, four loops should be on your hook here. Yarn over and pull through the stitch, remembering to adjust the tension here to loosen up a bit. Then we go again, yarning over and pulling through one loop to create the chain, and to complete the double crochet, yarning over and pulling through two loops, Yarning over one more time and pulling through the last two loops on your hook. Nearest your starting slip knot is your chain foundation and on the other side is the first row of double crochets. I'll do these five steps again so you can get the hang of this. 1. Yarn over and insert your hook into the next chain. 2. Yarn over and pull through that stitch. 3. Loosen up, yarn over and pull through one loop. 4. Yarn over and pull through 2 loops and 5. Yarn over and pull through the last 2 loops to complete the next foundation double crochet stitch. Now I'll show you how to move to row 2. First we need a turning chain. For double crochet I'm going to chain 2. Then turn your work. Make sure you're working into the correct side of the chain. Your slip knot should be on the bottom left. Skip the 2 chains you just made and work your usual double crochets starting from the 3rd chain from the hook. Keep going until you reach the end of your row and carry on your project from here as you need to. If you're working on a project with single crochets, check out the tutorial for the foundation single crochet in my tutorials playlist. Happy crochet! I cannot believe I made this. My hands made this. How I feel about certain design choices with little to no explanation. Yes. Yes. Absolutely not. For me, this one's 50-50. 100% no. Yes, and I don't care that it's impractical. I hate these. I think I might hate this even more. Yes, of course. No. Yes, I've grown really fond of this. Surprisingly, I actually like this. I'm so mature, I'm so mature, I got me in there, to tell me there's other men I know. One that I just want to if I can have you know what should I might, I might not the best idea. Learn Tunisian crochet with me. 
This is a Tunisian crochet hook. It's much longer than a typical hook, but you can learn on a regular hook if you want to. Just make sure it doesn't have any ergonomic handles, as we'll be doing forward and return passes. Start with a chain 20. Insert your hook into the first chain and yarn over and pull up a loop. Then immediately insert your hook into the second, yarn over and pull up a loop. We're gonna continue this all the way down the row, starting all of our stitches in what's called a forward pass so that we have all of our loops on the hook at the same time. Now we need to start our return pass. We'll yarn over and pull through just the first loop on the hook. This counts as a chain one if you were working in a traditional sense. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops to finish our first stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops, and we're gonna continue this way all the way down in our return pass. Yarn over and pull through two loops until you reach the very end You'll pull through two loops and be left with one loop on your hook. We've created these ridges and that's what we're going to be working into for the rest of the piece. This first ridge counts as a chain one, so we're not going to touch that in the piece. Insert your hook into the second ridge, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the third ridge, yarn over, pull up a loop, and continue down the piece to create our forward pass. Now when we get to the end, You'll see in this row and from here on out that we have actually two loops we could insert our hook in at the end. You'll want to insert your hook into both these loops and I will show you what it looks like so that we can create a clean finish at the end. So really be careful and make sure that you have both of these um, loops on your hook at the last stitch of the piece. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through just the last two loops that we inserted our hook on. That creates our chain one. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, and continue that way all the way down the piece. Just yarn over and pull through two loops all the way down the piece. This is our second return pass. Now to finish off, once you've achieved your length, you're simply going to insert your hook from the, in the second ridge from the end, and then do a slip knot instead of a forward and return pass. So you will just slip knot to the end, insert your hook into the ridge, slip knot to the end, and go on and on down the piece. This is what it looks like. There are several Tunisian crochet stitches to learn, but this is the basic one. If you knit or crochet, you have very likely used Ravelry before. If you haven't, it is a very popular pattern showing website and they have there's so much on there. So much. And one of my hobbies is just having a little look through, going doing some deep dives into what people are up to. And today I'm going to show you some of my favourite, more unique pieces that I've come across in my travels. So enjoy. Starting very strong with this one. I think it's crazy and I love it. You just know how long this took. And there's like a little rock and stuff for scale, but I need to see it. I need to see it better. I need like a video and like what's inside. Are there pillars all the way through? I need to know. 10 out of 10, almost as impressive as the structure it's based on, which is an ancient Greek sculpture in Sicily. <laughs> Speaks for itself really. But you know, if I had a dick, I'd be wearing this right now and nothing else. So 10 out of 10. Also probably good for tanning if you want to get full coverage, but keep your knob safe. <laughs> This is the only thing I'd be wearing with the penis holder, which is Jesus sandals. I think they've got a better picture. One. I also just love the title. Also known as Jesus sandals. Too true, Phyllis. Amazing. Okay, this is one of my favourites. At first I thought the goose was part of the pattern, but it's not. It's just the jumper for the goose. And if you look on her website or on the rest of her Ravelry, she's got like loads of different clothes for the goose. Am I missing something? Is this like a goose that you can find easily? I and mean, how do I get it? Because I want to make it clothes. So good. <laughs> Return to a little bit of realism with this one. Nice French horn. Why not? My sister plays a euphonium and my mum plays a saxophone. So if either of you want something like this, let me know. And this is a picture of someone's project that they did of it. 
gave it eyes, gave it a little tongue, slightly disturbing, but I love it. Last one for now, this is just a classic. Normally you see these in children's sizes. This is the only one I've seen kind of adult size and I love that they're reading a mermaid book. Obviously, what else would you do with your mermaid tail on? Honestly, if this didn't take so long, I'd probably make it because it looks really nice. <laughs> You're welcome. I love crochet. It's so creative. Maybe I'll show you some more another time. But for now, have a good week and I love you. to crochet in one hour. Make three granny squares. In one hour I can do just three small squares but you could do them bigger than mine. Put them together and you'll have a cute little bag. So I was having a cheeky little browse on my Pinterest board and found some more crochet inspiration. Perfect for spring summer, so I had to share it with you. First things first, this bag. Everything about it. I don't really know how I would make this, but I just thought it was cool. Carrying on with the bag thing, this is literally four granny squares. So two this side, two the other side, and then sewn together with some buttons and a strap. Super easy. This one, which is a little bit different, it's literally these tiny little squares all sewn together. Again, a little cute button uh, and a longer strap. This, how cool, a little placemat and a little, oh my God, I'm really in the way, um, cutlery holder thing. I mean, I don't know who actually uses those, but I thought that was really cute. Look at this cushion. Ah, so cute. Another cushion made of just like little granny, oh God, I'm really in the way. There you go like the sunlight is hitting it perfectly it's really giving it the golden hour oh god the phone's dropping sorry uh this i love the colors on this one also look at the cushion that i've got my grandma made it oh it's so cute this is literally again four granny squares all together and you can just pop your phone in there a trend that i've seen at the minute a lot of these little bandana things which literally go in your hair which are really cute for holiday this is another example just using granny squares and then another unique example that isn't granny squares and it's just you know a little bit more holy i guess you could say that's holy another really cute idea is coasters these are really simple i really like oh my god i really am really bad at this um how they're kind of using the colors but using different ones little straws, and again these cute little flowers i mean my current project is i mean it's not really a project it's literally one granny square so I could probably do anything with it. Uh, maybe I'll turn it into a little cushion. Learning to crochet? These tips might come in handy to make learning the basic stitches a little bit easier. Tip one, use a chunkier yarn with a bigger hook. Using a chunky weight yarn and a five or six millimeter hook will mean your stitches will be bigger, helping you to get used to what stitches look like and where to put the next stitch in your row. Tip two, start with acrylic yarn. Acrylic has a lovely soft feel to it and flows nicely when on your hook. I started learning with cotton, but I soon found out it can split easily, which makes things much harder. Tip three, use a bright color. Whilst you're learning, steer clear of black yarn because your stitches will be hard to see and hard to learn from. Let me know if there are any other crochet tips you need help with. I'm finna vlog and we finna see how long it take me to make my Hello Kitty headband. I mean visor. The ones I already made are hot pink, but I got some light pink, baby pink Hello Kitty yarn. From <laughs> pattern, where I get my pattern from, I made it up. Like, believe it or not, I'm I made this up. Like, believe me, please believe me, cause I'm like, she got looking easy. It's 618, and I'm just starting. So, y'all, my nasty nibbly 19 was yesterday. <laughs> I need to start counting how many um I, I be doing. Like, I just be... 
All right, it's seven thirteen, and I just I finally finished the hard part. Like the um, the, what's it called? The first row be so hard with this baby blanket because like, you can barely like see where you're putting the hook. So this is so much harder. So now I'm just cruising. You know, this is the easy part. Okay, it's seven fifty, and I'm done with the headband part. Like I'm done with the headband part right now. I just gotta make the brim. Here's just some fruit for thought. Why in the world, if somebody whoops your, whoops your, would you be friends with them after? No, 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 not only whoop, they jumped you. Mm -hmm. And you're still friends with them? Please, self-love, self-love. Okay, so I just put the brim on, and now it's just time to, um, decorate and bedazzle. And you're mad. You're mad. You're mad. That's why I'm. It's so cute.
Thank you.